Hello everyone and welcome to Let's Play Super Mario All-Stars, Super Mario Bros. 3. We begin with the Desert World, World 2-1. And we've got these Pile Driver Goombas. These are actually mini Goombas in blocks, and they'll jump out at you. And then we've also got Fire Snakes in this level as well. So this uh, world does have some new enemies to it. And most of the levels have this kind of a Caribbean theme as well, and that's kind of cool. Up here is a uh, bonus area. There's actually a P-switch. And the good thing about the P-switch is that it will actually turn those blocks into coins so that we can go down here for a hidden one-up. So you can do that if you want. I'm going to try to show as many hidden one-ups as I can, but if I skip a few, well, don't worry. You can always look us up on the internet. There's actually a site on Mario, I think it's Mario Universe or Marioverse, that has a map of every single level. And uh, that's where I'm getting all of my bonus information from. I'll try to put a link to that in the description. And don't forget about the contest, by the way. Just try to keep tabs of the score and see how the score grows, because that's going to help you in the contest, most definitely. Um, as far as the spade games, I'm going to show you one more, just what happens if you just kind of screw up. You don't get anything. The next world um, does have a hidden white mushroom house. And the way to get that is to get, I believe, 22 coins in this level. That's three coins. Or is it 44? Well, I'll, fi I'll figure it out. That's nine coins. That's 16 coins. And you go back over here. That's 17 coins right here in the P-Switch. 18, 19. 21, 23, 25, 27, 29, 30. I think that was 30 coins. 34 coins. If I'm wrong, well, you can correct me. But you have to get all of those coins for the White Mushroom House. This White Mushroom House is actually pretty easy, just like in World 1, but the hardest um, White Mushroom House to get is in World 3 so far. I've already pre-recorded all the way up to about World 5. Just so I can kind of get some gauge of what the score is going to be and how um, each episode is going to be as well. Unfortunately, the White Mushroom House sometimes is over one of these card matching games or a spade house or whatever, so you kind of have to deal with this. So I'm going to show you this one more time, and I may uh, go off screen for anything like this in the future. Also, I was playing ahead, and 99 lives is going to be pretty much a given at this point. I'm not going to tell you how many lives I have yet in World 4, but... Um, I have quite a few. I also found a hidden power-up in World 4 that I wasn't aware of until now. So that's kind of neat as well. That I thought you couldn't get into World 5, but apparently you can get it in World 4. So that's pretty interesting. And this anchor, by the way, I didn't discuss that. The anchor anchors an... Um, an airship in case it moves around a bit, but if you just take care of the airship once, you shouldn't have a problem with that. The anchor to me is kind of useless, unless it goes into a location where you don't want to have to finish a level, you know, or it goes to a certain area you have to finish a level to get to. But here we're going to uh, finish every level before we get to the airship anyway, so there's no point in that. So I may just waste it. Also, I think the anchor works on a white treasure ship as well. Also, I'm not going to get the warp uh, whistle in this world. I may make a bonus video with all the warp whistles just to kind of show that off, but we'll see. And you'll notice the door kind of centered itself even though it was uh, kind of off screen. 
And you have to land on the ground in order for Boom Boom to show up. Or not Boom Boom to show up, sorry. Boom Boom to wake up. Let me get my words right. Going back for this mushroom house, that pipe just takes us ahead in the level to, uh, to the other pipe that was on screen, so I'm not going to show that. We're going to use plenty of pipes by the time we get to worlds 3 and 4. Especially world 4. Probably not world 3 though. The Boomerang Brothers are pretty easy in world 2. I like the whistle sound when you get the treasure. The music box just puts the Hammer Brothers to sleep, so it's nothing really um, special about that. But when they're asleep, you can't um, access them. You can't defeat them, I mean. We've got a lot of fire snakes in this level. Now, the one good thing about the Desert World and Mario 3 compared to Mario 2 is that you don't have to do so much digging. Well, there is a little bit of quick sand. It's not as bad. And here I'm just swatting my tail because I wanted to show something off. Uh, what happens if you get rid of all of these blocks. And also that there is a hidden one-up in here somewhere. And up here we've got some music blocks. Well, a music block anyway. And you can see something else over to our left. If we go up here, we find a hidden area and a secret P-switch. And if you go down here, you'll get a whole bunch of coins. I've got enough just for one up. You do need, do need a turtle shell around here. You can either use the turtle shells there or this one. But this is the one part of the level that I don't like the most because you can easily mess this up. But the turtle shells do respawn. So that's a good thing. So you get a one-up regardless every three levels. I mean, the lives are just given to you like candy over here. Now quicksand's pretty cool. Quicksand level has the angry sun in it that swoops down at you. And the angry sun does show up in, I believe, uh, World 8 as well. So he only shows up in two levels. He's not the rarest enemy. As far as the number of levels go. I wanted to show all that as well. That you can actually kill the angry sun with a turtle shell. You don't have to, but it makes a little, life a little easier. They brought back the quicksand, but it's not that bad, really. Now it's World 4. There are two different paths up here. I'm going to take the first path. Well, the top path, anyway. Is there something up here that the uh, strategy guide, the Mario 3 strategy guide mentioned that a lot of people don't do, and I just think it's kind of a neat thing that they programmed this into the game? If you run as fast as you can, you can get a whole string of blocks, coin blocks, right here. And you can do this with the P-Wing as well. P-Wing, by the wing, uh, sorry, P-Wing, by the way, stands for Para-Wing, not Power-Wing or anything like that. I'm also going to show you the lower section here a little bit. And you can get an extra leaf down here if you wanted. Now that just goes back to where we started, so I'm going to go back this way now. I like the music. It's very relaxing in this world. And this is probably one of the easier worlds. But World 3 is definitely difficult. There are some levels in World 3 that really pull out my hair. Or what's left of my hair, anyway. And no, I'm not bald, but my hair is thinning. Just getting old. 
Definitely getting some gray hairs in the beard. That's life. I'm not too bad. I mean, gray hairs, at least for men, are character. I know it sounds sexist, but it's the truth. I mean, men are kind of lucky in that regard. When we get gray hairs, it's, it's distinguished somehow. I'll definitely take another leaf. Raccoon Mario. It's not my favorite power-up, but it's the power-up I'll probably use most often. I decided to use a Starman here just to uh, take care of some Chain Chomps. And just because I'm going to get plenty of Starman later. I like that this game gave you additional power-ups before you could play each level. Um, you know, so you could actually stock up on power-ups, so, um, you know. It was well before, um, New Super Mario Brothers did that. Of course, New Super Mario Brothers had fewer power-ups that you could save. They still had some power-ups, though. Um, but still, New Super Mario Brothers could let you, uh, save up to 100 power-ups, I think it was. Of course, some of the secrets in New Super Mario Brothers are a pain in the butt. At least the DS version. Now the uh, new Super Mario Bros. U has some coins that are very difficult to get. I'm not worried about that P-Switch, and also there's another leaf over here if you need it. I like how the leaf just kind of floats down. I don't know how I missed the chain chomp there. But I did. We got a pyramid over here. This pyramid has a beetle, uh, sorry, not built beetle, buzzy beetles that actually cling to the walls and then they'll drop at you like kamikaze pilots, I suppose. You know, there's always this old internet joke, you know, why did kamikaze pilots wear helmets? Well, actually, there's a good reason for that because, and I figured, uh, well, this is my theory on that. Kamikaze pilots would wear hel helmets just like any other fighter pilots because your head could easily move around in the cockpit even though you're buckled in. And you don't want your head to actually hit the side of a hard cockpit in order to fly the plane, you know. Then you'd be unconscious and you wouldn't hit your target. So I think that's why they did that. Also, there's a hidden one up here. If I can find it, there it is. I didn't know about this for a long time, many years, until I recently looked it up. But yeah, that's probably why kamikaze pilots wore helmets. Because you can easily bump your head if you're doing maneuvers in your plane and, you know, you wouldn't want that to happen. It's like the old question, you know, why is there braille on ATMs, drive up ATMs? Well, the good question is that is sometimes you can walk up to the ATM and a lot of times the blind person in the passenger seat is let, or they let them over so they can actually put in their pen because you don't want to give your pen to just anybody. So, that's another thing I bet you didn't know. I'm always interested in useless trivia like that. Anyways, we got a hoopster here. And the airships are now starting to get much more difficult, I think. Also, I don't know why it took so long here, but apparently I did. Sorry about that. <laughs> I was just, you know, waiting for awkward silence. Sure, why not? I mean, I could be wrong about the kamikaze pilot thing, but at least that's my theory. So. I always like the airships, how they kind of did this kind of a uh, sine pattern, sine wave pattern. And the bullets would still maintain their trajectory. So they could fall, but they could start rising again. And you could easily memorize where the bullets were going to be at a given point. And you'll notice the bullet bills, their arms do not move. Like they do in the Lost Levels and Super Mario Brothers, the All-Stars Edition. And don't worry about Rocky Wrench here. Now we've got Morton Koopa Jr. One of the other Koopa kids. He's taking the magic wand and just throwing circles at us, I guess. Yes, 
Yes, I got the magic wand well before it landed. That's gonna be my thing in this game, grabbing the magic wand, not letting it hit the ground. Unless I forget, but that's kind of an OCD thing I do. What happens to the airship once you get rid of the Koopa Kids? Does it just kind of float, float away or something? I don't know. But anyway. I guess every kid gets a ship of some kind. If that makes any sense whatsoever. Anyways, I got a little note about Kuribo Shoe. And we got a little cloud. And we're going to deal with uh, World 3 the next episode of Let's Play Super Mario Bros. 3. So thank you so much for watching, and have a wonderful day. And don't forget to check out the contest rules and the contest information on the first video of this Let's Play. So again, have a good day, and bye-bye.